Hello and welcome to the channel. Be sure to share, like, and comment down below. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button for daily videos on news and politics. Hannity warns evidence is coming that will rock the foundation of Washington, D.C. In an explosive Thursday night monologue, Fox News host Sean Hannity warned viewers that evidence is coming that will rock the foundation of Washington, D.C. All right, so we're going to go slow. What we have been reporting on night after night for over a year now is turning into a scandal bigger than Watergate. And here's why this is all so alarming. All the information we have been telling you about so far is only a sample of what's to come. It's the tip of the iceberg. Now, these facts, this evidence will rock the foundation of Washington, D.C. It will make you question, how is it possible this could ever happen? in the United States of America. It's that serious. And it's why we have been pushing so hard on this program for answers. Now, meanwhile, you have the liberal mainstream media. They're supposed to be all about truth, all about transparency. They have been missing in action. They have turned their backs. They are ignoring the biggest story in their lifetimes. Their sole focus has been on delegitimizing and destroying President Trump at every single turn. Now, that's why for over a year they have been peddling hour after hour fake news conspiracy theories about so-called Trump-Russia collusion. They have nothing to base it on, no evidence whatsoever. And here's what they don't want you to know about the key officials that are involved in the scandal. Let's start with player number one. That, of course, would be Hillary Clinton. Now, remember Donna Brazile in her book? She talked about Hillary rigging the primary against Bernie Sanders. Imagine if that was Donald Trump. Then Clinton tried to build on that idea. She was teaming up with the DNC. They worked through a law firm. They paid over $12 million for that salacious dossier that was filled with Russian lies, Russian propaganda. Why? Because they wanted to influence the general election through lies. Clinton also tried to keep this a secret. She went through a law firm, Perkins Coie, which then hired Glenn Simpson and Fusion GPS, and they paid former British spy, Russian expert Christopher Steele. Now, according to Fox News legal analyst Greg Jarrett, who's been doing a deep dive into all of this, two crimes may have been committed in this instance. 52 U.S. Code 30121, which says it is illegal to make a payment, donation, or trade anything of value with a foreign national in connection with any kind of election in America. Now, remember, Steele's a former British spy. He was only hired by Fusion GPS once Hillary Clinton started picking up the tab for the Trump opposition research, not before. Greg also points out 52 USC 30101. It makes it a crime to file a false or misleading campaign report. Now, a watchdog group, the Campaign Legal Center, they've actually filed a complaint with the Federal Election Commission accusing the Clinton campaign and the DNC of violating campaign finance laws and for failing to disclose payments they made for this dossier. All right, next up is disgrace. Former FBI Director James Comey. Now, he, along with corrupt FBI agent member Peter Strzok and other top deputies, not rank and file, they put the fix in to save Hillary Clinton from prosecution when we know she committed multiple felonies as it relates to the email server scandal. Now, Comey and his lackeys, they ignored incontrovertible evidence about Clinton breaking the law, having secret, top secret, special access programming, classified information stored in that mom and pop shop bathroom closet, remember, on the server. They also failed to act after Clinton's team deleted 33,000 subpoenaed emails. Then they acid wash using bleach bit on the hard drives. And then any devices they had left over, they busted those up with a hammer. And by the way, the mobile devices they eventually turned over to the FBI, they were useless. They had no SIM cards in them. Now, despite all of this, Comey, Strzok, and others, they crafted an exoneration statement months before ever interviewing Hillary Clinton and 17 other key witnesses in the case. By the way, that's not how law enforcement works. And in that exoneration statement, when describing Clinton's mishandling of classified information, Comey changed the words, the legal standard, gross negligence, which is the legal standard, to extreme carelessness. And they also altered a section that said it was reasonably likely that hostile foreign actors and adversaries of the United States had hacked the server. And they completely removed information about Hillary Clinton emailing President Obama, which means that Obama knew Hillary was breaking the law or should have known. Now, all of this allowed Hillary Clinton to stay in the presidential race, which obviously they wanted. And then she used the Russian propaganda dossier. Why? To lie to the American people. 
Nobody had verified what was in that dossier, not even Glenn Simpson of Fusion GPS. Now, again, going back to Greg Jarrett, according to him, if Comey exonerated Hillary Clinton for political purposes, well, that means he obstructed justice. He should have been seeking the truth. And that's only the start of Comey's involvement in this scandal. And according to the House Intel Committee in their memo, Comey signed off personally on three FISA applications to spy on the Trump campaign. And his FBI lied to the FISA court about the dossier being bought and paid for by Hillary Clinton and the DNC. Oh, excuse me. They did have a footnote. It may have some political origins, but they knew Hillary and the DNC paid for it and Comey's FBI. Then they also used that Yahoo News article written by Michael Isikoff about Carter Page. They were corroborating the dossier. Well, here's the problem. They knew the source for the Yahoo story was Christopher Steele, and the FBI never independently verified the information, nor did Fusion GPS, because Steele was their only source. And by the way, from there, it only gets worse. According to the Crassley Graham memo, the bulk, let me repeat, the bulk of their application to the FISA court, the FBI put before a judge, consisted, the bulk of it, the phony dossier, the Hillary Clinton phony dossier. Now, in March of 2017, Comey told Congress he didn't bother co collaborating or corroborating the dossier because the FBI thought Christopher Steele was credible. Really? Well, you, don't have to, you don't have to corroborate these things? And Comey also testified under oath that the same dossier that he used to get the FISA warrant was, quote, salacious and unverified. And Comey also told then-President-elect the same thing in January 2016, but it was only uh, just a couple of months earlier the dossier was used to get a warrant. Did he tell the FISA judge it's unverified? Did he tell the FISA judge any of this information? No, he did not. Okay, that is guilt by omission purposely omitting information that likely would have had a big impact on that judge. All right, player number three tonight, former Deputy FBI Director Andrew McCabe. Now, the GOP House memo, that details how McCabe testified without the dossier, the FISA warrant to surveil would never have been approved. And McCabe is also tied to the Clinton email cover-up. Remember the recent reports? Andrew McCabe, he was forced to resign over revelations in a soon-to-be-released DOJ Inspector General report. And we're told all about the Clinton email investigation. And the Wall Street Journal is reporting that McCabe and other top FBI officials, remember, they also knew about Uma Abedin's emails that were found on Anthony Weiner's laptop. They knew about them in September of 2016. Important information. But they waited at least a month before they told Congress. And we can't forget McCabe's wife. She got $700,000, an astronomical amount of money, for a failed Senate run in the Commonwealth of Virginia from a group tied to Clinton ally Terry McAuliffe and from the Virginia Democratic Party. Now, McCabe eventually had to recuse himself from the Clinton email investigation. Was it because he got caught or because he thought it was the right thing to do? You got two key allies of Andrew McCabe. Now, they're corrupt, and they're the Trump-bashing FBI lovers, Peter Strzok and Lisa Page. Now, they're players number four and five. Page actually served as the legal counsel to McCabe. And as for Strzok, like we've been telling you, he's at the epicenter of the scandal, every scandal, every issue that we've been talking about the last year and a half. Now, Strzok is a former top FBI counterintelligence official. He's the one that signed the documents that kicked off this phony Russia probe. He also, also oversaw the interviews of Lieutenant General Michael Flynn. He was the guy that interviewed Hillary Clinton and her top aides. And we've already told you how Strzok played a key role in changing the Clinton exoneration statement. Remember, they were changing gross negligence, extreme carelessness. Then there's Strzok and Page's extreme hatred of Donald Trump. Remember in text messages, they called him an idiot, a menace, a loathsome human being. They said if Trump and if Clinton wanted to win 100 million to zero, and Strzok and Page also talk with, who we now think is Andrew McCabe, about that insurance policy, oh, God forbid Donald Trump, Trump wins the election. And yesterday, we got a new batch of text messages that show their inherent anti-Trump bias. In the lead-up, of course, to the election, Lisa Page was fearful. Oh, my gosh, Donald Trump is going to win. On election day, Strzok writes back, oh, my God, this is blanking terrifying. And the following day, he says, oh, my God, I'm so depressed. And a couple of days later, Lisa Page writes, well, I bought all the president's men. And I figure I needed to brush up on Watergate, the insurance people. Then later, Page sends a message that reads, God, 
being here makes me angry. Lots of highfalutin national security talk. And meanwhile, we have our task ahead of us. I wonder if that's tied to the insurance policy. What does Page mean by task? When you put all of this together with the insurance policy text, it raises serious, serious red flags. Now, these lovebirds also message back and forth about special counsel Robert Mueller. Remember, they had five months of missing text? Well, right after Robert Mueller was appointed on May 19, two days after the appointment, Strzok was debating about joining the investigation. And Strzok asked his lover Page, an investigation leading to impeachment? So even before Mueller's probe, even before it got started, Strzok and Page were talking about impeaching President Trump. Now, this part is very important. During the same back and forth, Strzok text, well, you and I both know the odds are nothing. If I thought it was likely, I'd be there, no question, meeting with Mueller. I hesitate in part because of my gut sense and concern, there's no big there there. Pretty stunning admission. Now, Strzok helped start the Russia investigation, but he thought there was no there there. Also, directly wrapped up in all of this is the demoted DOJ official Bruce Orr and his wife Nellie. They're players six and seven in this game, if you want to call it a game of corruption. Bruce Orr, he was reprimanded at the DOJ after it was discovered he was meeting with Fusion GPS both before and after the election. And Orr's office, remember, just four doors down from Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein. His wife, Nellie Orr, she worked at Fusion GPS. And by the way, her job? focusing in on the anti-Trump opposition research dossier. And according to the Nunes memo, Bruce Orr told investigators that he had a close relationship with the dossier author, Christopher Steele. And Bruce Orr said that Steele said he was desperate that Donald Trump not get elected and was passionate about him not being president. Pretty amazing. He couldn't write this in a novel. Now we turn our attention to the former attorney general. Loretta Lynch, she's player number eight in all of this. And according to testimony from former FBI Director James Comey, Lynch instructed the FBI to refer to their criminal investigation into Hillary Clinton as a matter. Don't call it an investigation. Don't call it what it really is. And then it got worse. In June of 2016, while the FBI's so-called independent investigation is ongoing, Bill Clinton is meeting with Loretta Lynch in Phoenix on a tarmac for 40 minutes. And Lynch said the meeting was about grandchildren in golf. But this is on July 1st. Now, the former AG announced that she was stepping away from the investigation after this, and she just accept the FBI's conclusion. Now, keep in mind, this all took place before Hillary Clinton was interviewed on the 4th of July weekend by the FBI and then exonerated the next business day. And after Lynch announced that she was taking a back seat to the Clinton investigation, Strzok literally texts Page and says, timing looks like hell. Page replies, yeah, it's awful timing, and then adds, oh, it's a real profile in courage, talking about Lynch, since she knows no charges will be brought. Now, four days later, Comey holds his press conference where his infam- he infamously announces the FBI is not recommending charges against Clinton. After 13 and a half minutes of laying out a pretty damning case against Hillary, the deputy attorney general, Rod Rosenstein, he's also a player in all of this, this ongoing FISA scandal. We'll call him player number nine tonight. Now, first and foremost, Rosenstein, he oversees the entire Russian investigation, and he was the official responsible for appointing Robert Mueller as a special counsel. We'll have more on Mueller in a minute. But first, we know that it was Rosenstein who signed off on one of the applications to extend the FISA warrant against the Trump campaign. And then you have President Obama. Oh, yeah, what about him? We'll call him player number 10 tonight. If Russia interfering in our election was so troubling, why didn't the Obama administration say something prior to the election? We now have an NBC News report. The Obama White House wasn't too worried about it because, quote, they thought that Hillary was going to win. Well, what does that tell you? If Hillary wins, it's okay. And then the cherry on top is Robert Mueller. We'll call him player number 11 tonight. Now, the special counsel heading up the Russia investigation, we know that Mueller hired an extremely I mean extremely partisan team filled with individuals who had given over 50 grand, but only to Democrats. No money to Donald Trump. We know they gave money to, let's see, Obama and Clinton and the DNC. We also know Mueller is best friends, BFF, with James Comey. We know that he interviewed with Trump to be the next FBI director. And the day before he was appointed special counsel is when that interview took place. 
So it's all very suspicious. And those are just the main key players in all of this. It gets complicated, but I want to make sure everybody's understanding this, because as we move forward, I would guarantee almost at this point there's going to be massive investigations, and I would not at all be surprised people will be going to jail. People will be indicted. Be sure to share, like, subscribe, and comment down below and tell me how you feel about this report. But other than that, I hope you guys have a great day. Peace.